How are you guys doing? Today's episode is sponsored by Express VPN. I hope you guys had a fantastic New Year's as well with your family. You guys took a break or did whatever you guys did. I did. I took a break, and honestly, it uh, didn't really feel like a break because it gave me actually a bit more anxiety because I wasn't working. So, so it's kind of funny how you guys think about it, like or how I think about it, I guess. That these vacations are supposed to like take a break and like relax. But me, it was like, all right, I got a little bit of anxiety. I'm ready to get back home. Let's go do something. I got to work. I got to keep my mind going. You know, that's like me. And uh, the other day, I told you guys I was bringing on another gentleman to help, like, with the show. And, and some of you guys thought I was quitting for some reason, which is kind of strange. Um, because I'm, I'm pretty much just bringing on this, this gentleman. Hopefully, hopefully, we can work something out or we can expand. That's what the whole idea is. Expand the show just a bit more uh, out, outside of Ukraine, or just do some more stuff out. I don't, I don't know. I don't really know yet. You know, it's, I need somebody else to come on and help me actually expand past what I'm doing. He's actually going to be here next week. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be good. I hope you guys enjoy him. Uh, it'd be a good co-host for at least a week to see if you guys do like him. If you guys don't, please let me know in the comments. Roast him. Do whatever you need to do. I know a lot of you guys and gals out there do know who I'm talking about. It is Willie. He is going to have a very thick accent, and uh, he's got an inoperable brain tumor. That's literally what's going on in his life. He's, and he's got a massive beard. And he's only twenty. I think he's only twenty six as well, which is kind of crazy. He does not look twenty six. But anyway. You got you to give something a shot. If it doesn't work, whatever. He was a good guy. He's, he's fine. We've been talking for like the last nine months, ten months or so. Charles has actually met him. One of my camera guys did meet him over inside of Ukraine. So we have worked with him kind of indirectly. Uh, last thing, though, before we kick this video off, this the first one of the year, I guess. I was sitting through some, some comments in the, the previous video, and I, was, and I saw a bunch of people complaining about the sponsored ads in the video. Just so everybody is aware, okay? They keep saying we're like sold out or we're doing this for money. I need to let this this... This, everybody know that's watching this or listening to this right now. We don't make enough off AdSense to even cover the fixed char- the fixed cost of this channel because most of the videos are not monetized out the gate. Legitimately, after taxes and everything else, I don't even pay myself off the channel. My my camera guy it barely even covers his cost. Okay, just just so you guys are aware. And if you guys are new, if you guys did not know this either, since the day we started this channel, I have never once paid myself directly yet. Yes, since the war started inside of Ukraine, I still have not paid myself a ch- paycheck. I've done this entire thing. I paid myself back for like the equipment I purchased and stuff like that. But other than that, I have not touched and have actually paid myself one time. So stating that this thing is a money grab or money hungry is absolutely insane. We started making these videos. Uh, I, I, we had no idea how large it would become and whatnot. I had no idea. I'm sure at some point I'm going to pay myself from the accounts. But at this point, the vision is to grow it and to, to not siphon all the money out. So I'm putting it back into it. So I haven't even paid myself yet. So calm yourself. So bringing on the host and flying them over, I mean, just for that one week, it's going to cost me like seven grand. This stuff's not cheap. Think about that. So if you guys freak out, calm down, see those random comments with nothing's changed. The money's got to them. Or he's just selling. No, it hasn't. I got to say thank you to everybody on the Patreon side of thing for being the real MVPs, helping with the cost of this channel. I sincerely do appreciate every single one of you. It goes farther than you guys do realize. So off the tangent there. I know some of you guys are probably shocked. You know what, Charles, did you know, my camera guy actually knows this, but I still have not paid myself one time, Charles knows that, not one single time from this channel, and we still do this every, almost every day. Oh, my gosh. And then we, we are experiencing a little bit of a, a winter lull. I am going to say that. That is a real thing, and it has to do a lot with, with the soupy conditions we're seeing in certain areas, but here at the end of the week... It's going to freeze back over. It's going to be pretty. It's actually, I got a lot of stuff I'm going to show you in the mapping. Got some cool videos I'm going to show you guys as well from certain areas. It's it's pretty brutal. It's not going to lie. It's pretty brutal in Bakma. So while you guys are enjoying your nice, warm, comfortable holidays, enjoying drinking and whatnot, those boys were out there hammering down in Bakma. I'm going to tell you guys that right now. And since we've left, there's been some big things. It's actually happened over in Ukraine. And the biggest thing that's happened was just about a day or so ago. And that was a very large chunk of Russians have actually been eliminated by a HIMAR strike. And a very large chunk. We're not going to know the entire, uh, I guess, numbers per se, because it's going to be on the Russian side of things. It's going to be kind of skewed. Now, the footage that is currently being overlaid is of the buildings, or what I guess what is left of the buildings that was actually targeted yesterday inside of Makvika. Okay, this is going to be on the southern side of the country, southern southeast side of the country. I'll show you guys here in a little bit. But right now, the Russian Ministry of Defense is claiming that only 63 soldiers thus far have been KIA from this one attack, which I believe they've also stated this, that like two of the six HIMARS, uh, the rounds that were actually shot in there, they were actually intercepted. So four of them clearly hit the targets. So they shot six, they intercepted two, which is not very good numbers when you guys look at like the Ukrainians are claiming that they're hitting about 85% of the Russian rockets shot in or missiles, I guess you'd say. So, I, I, I mean, the interception does work a little bit. They did take down at least two of them, or they're claiming they have. Now, if you guys were curious of just 
how a, a strike like this could come to light or how such a mistake could actually be made by the Russians. Can you think about it? You're talking about OPSEC, operational security, like little like stuff like this. It was a company sized element inside of a building. Now, how, how does one make this kind of mistake? It was larger than a company size, I guess you would say, inside of a building, all held up, and they're, they're, they're all using their phones. And this is what's pretty much happened. The Ukrainians had noticed a significant activity inside of this one condensed area of, of certain mobile phones that they do keep tabs on, I guess, and they're watching and, and whatnot. And it ended up being the demise that's completely sealed the fate of this entire building as a whole. This is what we call baptism by high Mars is the best way to put it. Uh, the New Year's videos that I keep seeing over and over and over again are like a top-level cringe type stuff that's been coming out of of Russia, like like coming in out of the the New Year's. I know I didn't get this, I didn't make any videos of the New Year's and stuff, so we're gonna look at some of this stuff. It's like Hunger Game esque, okay? Hunger Games type stuff that is just you're like, oh God, what am I, what am I watching? Dude, look at the cheesy smiles on everybody's faces. Look at the, the background, everybody's dancing and laughing. Like, what in the world is going on here? This is weird. Мой новогодний тост будет несколько необычным. В уходящем году Запад пытался развалить Россию, даже не подумав о том, что в строении мира Россия – это несущая конструкция. Да, господа, так что нравится, не нравится, Россия расширяется. I mean, you, you guys cannot sit there right now and tell me that they did not get that scene directly from Hunger Games. No way. There, there's no way. Like, no way. It's so weird. <laughs> I love that. So like it or not, Russia is expanding, okay? And that, that seems a bit premature since the past few months, it's been a pretty, it's been pretty brutal for them. Like, like really brutal, actually. Okay, we're gonna that, that that is enough of that. Pretty much, they just sing for the next minutes or so, and they like dance, kind of like like just really awkwardly, and they're all smiling. They're all everybody so happy. You look around the, the crowd, and it's just this. It's just the same thing. It's just yeah. It's like it almost looks like North Korea, like I, I, it it really is. And and Putin was also struggling to get through the New Year's speech. By the way, discussing. Like how this whole thing, this whole new war started against them. It, he's been, he was just struggling to listen to him. He's, he's not, like, he's not doing too well. Дорогие друзья, с 2014 года после крымских событий Россия живет в условиях санкций. Но в этом году нам была объявлена настоящая санкционная война. Те, кто ее затеял, ожидали полного разрушения нашей промышленности, финансов, транспорта. Этого не произошло, потому что мы все вместе создали надежный запас прочности. То, что мы сделали и делаем в этой сфере, все это и направлено на укрепление нашего суверенитета в важнейшей области, в экономике. А наша борьба за себя, за свои интересы и за свое будущее, безусловно, служит вдохновляющим примером для других государств. Now, I don't really know who he is trying to impress by stating that they're just inspiring other nations. I did read this yesterday. Okay, I did read this yesterday. Apparently, Brazil is considering working with Russians now. And it has to do with something like they're purchasing or Brazil is purchasing a certain amount of fertilizer or Russia is buying fertilizer from Brazil. Something like that. I couldn't remember. I didn't really read too much into it. I was like, oh, my God. What, what is going on? It's, it's almost like we're continuing to hit that rewind button just a tad bit every single week, seeing ourselves from some type of like twilight zone, just over and over, just repeating itself. You know what I mean? Like you would assume uh, that he would reshoot that entire piece since he was struggling to get words out without like coughing the entire... Like, actually, you know what? That, that means that if they, if they used that piece, if that was the best clip that they had, then there's no way that they would have just taken that one shot, right? There's no way. There's no way he said, you know what, we're done. He talked a few times, and it's good, it's good. That must have been, like, the the best one they had. And he must have been really struggling to, for that one to even see the light of day. 
So we all know ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, right? You guys all know this. I know this. You know this. I've been preaching this for months. But here's something you might not know. You guys can actually use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in certain countries. So it's really simple to do. I just fire up ExpressVPN app, change my location to Canada. And refresh Netflix, and there you go. Boom, we got Vikings. That easy. ExpressVPN lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You guys can choose from almost 100 different countries. So just imagine all the Netflix libraries you can go through. It is absolutely insane. Love Korean dramas. Hey, switch over to something in South Korea, and boom, you're there. Right there. That easy. And I think I've told you guys this before. When my wife and I were over in Belgium, she was wanting to watch a certain show that was here in America. She couldn't watch it there in Belgium. She used my ExpressVPN off of my iPad, and she just, boom, loaded it up, and she was watching it instantly. It's that easy. It takes two seconds. There's hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason I use ExpressVPN to watch shows is because it's ridiculously fast. There's never any buffering or a lag, and you guys can stream in HD no problem. ExpressVPN also works on all of your devices, phones, media consoles, smart TVs, and much more, so you guys can watch whatever you guys want on the big screen or on the go. So if you want to get access to hundreds of new shows, go to expressvpn.com slash Rob right now and you guys can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com forward slash Rob right now. Go check them out. You guys can get three months for free expressvpn.com forward slash Rob to learn more. So you guys remember in our previous episode when I was showing you guys a video of the grandma that was being drugged off the bus inside of Russia because she thought the war wasn't a good thing. She was trying to speak her mind. She had her own thoughts and whatnot. Well, we finally get to see like a response from the Russian media on how they think about this type of thing and how they should be handling it. And you guessed it. You can guess it. Indoctoring their kids at a young age so they don't have to have these type of thoughts as they grow up. It's Проблем, как реагировать на uh, жертву украинской пропаганды, значит, понимать, что руки распускать не надо, надо добиться того, чтобы этих чтобы, жертв не было, да, чтобы, да. Этих жертв не было, чтобы преобладало вот какое-то действительно такое И вот зацепившись слова говорить. Нина Александровна про начиная с детского сада, мы вам сейчас приведем несколько примеров, как либо младшим школьникам, либо и вовсе дошкольникам да, сейчас рассказывают и про то, что происходит на специальной военной операции, ну и какие-то... Патриотические мероприятия, опять же, на эту тему с этим связаны, проводят. В Москве участников детского фестиваля по карате наградили медалями с символами Z и V, сделанными из осколков натовских хаймерсов. Организаторы признают, что даже если сейчас не все дети поймут смысл этих медалей, то обязательно поймут позже, когда вырастут. Вручать надо именно детям, тем, чье сознание еще формируется, чтобы сформировать правильные ориентиры. Взрослый человек посмеется и выкинет. Скажет, что это фуфло и пропаганда. Yes, an adult would throw away all the medals because they would understand what propaganda really is. And the best part about this entire thing is there, there's claiming that they're pieces of high Mars, correct? And that the Russians destroyed these high Mars and so on and so forth. But for one, they're either just going to be random pieces of metal or two, they're, well, they're random pieces of high Mars but they're going to be from the exploded pieces, which are large chunks of shrapnel from an area that was been targeted. So a little weird there. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's probably just random pieces of metal because they didn't take any high Mars. They haven't destroyed any high Mars. So there's no way that this could actually be pieces of high Mars unless it's high Mars shrapnel that was actually shot into ro uh, Russian positions, which I don't know how it'd be shaped like that still. So I'm going to say it's pretty much propaganda. And that is why an adult would understand to throw it away. В конце октября в подмосковном детском саду провели урок мужества. Тогда к детям пришел член ветеранской организации «Боевое братство» и показал разное оружие, в том числе гранатомет. В начале декабря уроки мужества уже прошли по всей России. Многие из них были посвящены легендарному танку Т-34. Этот танк — гармоничное сочетание боевых свойств, огневой мощи, броневой защиты и высокой подвижности. В Тюменской школе новогодняя атмосфера переплелась с патриотической. Тут и традиционная елка, и военный марш. У Минпросвещения другое предложение — наносить изображения с героями, как спецоперации, так и Великой Отечественной, на фасады школьных зданий. Начать предлагают с тех школ, что и так нуждаются в капремонте. So this, this kind of thing right here, it reminds me of something else. Like something so different from, from far away, like a long time ago. 
When the National Socialist German Workers' Party assumed control of Germany, it immediately set out to spread its influence into every aspect of German society. And the lives of German children were no exception. Ah, uh, yes. We all remember that. Stardom at a young age, right? That We've never seen this before. And the vision is so clear now on, on the end goal. What is the end goal that the Russians have in regards to either their, their views of the world or just Ukraine for that matter? Like the older people who are inside of a control want the USSR days back. Like we all know this. And I, I personally can't fathom why they would want this because it was a failed state. It, it doesn't really make any sense to me. It really doesn't. But you know what? They reach their own. Вот эта вот битва стартовала в год столетия СССР. Создание вот на такой огромной территории действительно народного справедливого государства. И вот здесь в аудитории, за исключением, наверное, Николая Николаевича, люди, которые могут сказать, что СССР — это моя страна. И вот... Ну, за... Я не настолько молод, я да? уже СССР родился. Вот. Да. Потому Спасибо. что это, я понимаю, что это молодым. моя страна, да? А, которой как будто нет... Но, с другой стороны, она есть, она будет всегда, потому что пока мы будем мыслить ее, пока не, мы ну, будем... Для меня они... СССР родина, Спа... я да, вспомин... присягу давал Союзу Советских Социалистических И, Республик. А, важно, что идет а, а, сейчас а, период понимания тех вот и осмысления тех ошибок и проблем, которые были заложены в этом проекте, которые мы не, уда... не смогли преодолеть, и сейчас мы их переживаем заново, с кровью, с болью, со слезами пытаемся преодолеть. А западный мир не может нам простить до сих пор, что у нас был такой проект. Они не могут с этим э, смириться, потому что все достижения, которые были сделаны, и прорывы, это действительно советское чудо, начиная от экономического советского чуда, заканчивая военным, культурным. Now this lady is absolutely off her rocker. The USSR was a failed state and hasn't been around for 30 years. Well, or so. I, I, and and can, can someone please explain to me what military achievements they have been able to accomplish as well? They can't even take Kharkiv, for God's sakes. She is spitting out some, some North Korean type stuff right now, claiming that they're about to take over the entire world. Like, what? This is one of the weirdest pieces and, and biggest propaganda things I've, I've seen. It's like the strongest evidence of propaganda that we've, we've seen coming out of Russia since the beginning. I think since the beginning of the war. Like, what in the world does cultural Soviet miracle, like, what does that even mean? Please, someone explain that to me. I, I, don't, I legit have no idea what she's trying to refer to here. Charles, what does cultural, I can't even say it, cultural Soviet miracle Вообще, мне кажется, что, я сейчас скажу фразу, которую меня будут потом многие пинать, но вообще жизнь сильно переоценена. А смерть Какую смысл? Зачем бояться того, что неизбежно? Нет, они не боятся, более, поэтому ну, они там и находятся. Мы же в рай попадем. То есть поэтому ну, смерть это окончание одного земного пути и начало другого. Но бояться этого, а исходя из этого, чтобы это влияло на... This is also fairly ironic coming from the guy who is sitting inside of his warm office telling all the men who are fighting, don't worry, don't fear death. I'm here inside my office. You guys get out there and just get at it. Especially coming to my guy's never He's not even served. And he's like telling these guys, get out there. You can do it, boys. I've got faith in you. I was there once. Not really. Because if you guys are wondering, like, it's stating that life is overrated. And you don't have to worry to die for your cause. And you will just go to heaven. And just, just take his word for it. That's all you got to trust in him. He knows best. Вот я вам серьезно говорю, огромное количество э, школьников и студентов очень плохо представляют себе карту России и карту мира, а также очень плохо представляют себе, как эта карта менялась в ходе исторических преобразований, что на самом деле закладывает в них неправильное представление так, о согласен. перспективах. Вот э, простейшее предложение. Во-первых, не издавать карты, на которых регионы России обозначены разным цветом. Друзья мои, вы таким образом закладываете мысль о том, что это может развалиться. Я им серьезно говорю, да. тут символический ряд очень важно проработать. Второе, чтобы не было вопросов, а что мы делаем на Украине, я вот лично очень советую попытаться найти совмещение политической, географической и исторической карт, когда вы издаете большую карту, на которой вот современная Россия, а вот границы Советского Союза, а вот границы Российской империи, а вот границы нашего влияния, Ближний Восток, там, скажем, какие-нибудь острова и так далее. Тогда с детства будет понятно, 
Почему у нас могут быть претензии на влияние на этих землях? А когда детям начинают говорить, вот это наше государство, и оно раздроблено еще, так сказать, на 100 частей, а вот это другие государства, у них совершенно другая символическая картинка. Да, это частная вещь, но это важно. А где заканчиваются границы России? Нигде. Ну это, это вообще, а как бы, так сказать... Не, Владимир Владимирович четко сказал, так... нигде. Хорошо, тогда давайте, тогда давайте, так сказать, будем делать глобус России. Вот, вот это правильная мысль. Now the globe of Russia. That is a, that's an interesting take. This has to be one of the biggest pieces of proof of the amount of influence they are trying to inflict on their youth. I did not start off this episode thinking we were going to be discussing the possibility of Russians seriously making their own version of Hitler's youth, like straight indoctrinating these kids into thinking a certain way. And, and I'm, I'm going to say this once again. As I said earlier, they cannot even take Kharkiv, which is in Ukraine, a smaller, weaker nation that somehow... The Russians are going to have global influence, and yet they can't even beat, like, a nation that is sitting right next to them, not across the other side of the, the world, <laughs> past many oceans. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, bodies of water, I guess. Not many oceans, but bodies of water. Like, you really think you're going to get... You can't even get past Ukraine, so you're going to... Oh, I yeah, got to give. My God. Come on now. Let's flip over some mapping here, which is always a good piece. It's always a good segment to these episodes. The Russians have lost some ground in the northern portion of this country. We're looking outside of Kupiansk. We've got Sivitov down here. So there's Sivitov. There's Kupiansk. Two areas right now that are... Kupiansk is, is pretty important. It was a logistical hub of this area for a long time. Now it's controlled by the Ukrainians, as we know. But see, this is what I'm talking about right here. See this big chunk of land. Big chunk of Ukrainian land. They've been able to actually take back this. This is just east of Kupiansk. Uh, this is actually a fairly large chunk. It's been taken over the last few days. I have adjusted the area just north of here as well, where the, the Ukrainians, I had thought that they may possibly taken, but I wasn't entirely sure the line had stopped. But now it's it's a bit more corrected and shows the ground the Russians actually do hold. Now, the men inside this region are experiencing like daily rain and snow for the next few days, which by the end of the week, it's going to freeze, complete freeze. The, dump, the, the, the temps are going to dump off and it's going to be fairly, fairly chilly. Like chilly, cold enough to where everything's going to freeze over. All that stuff that's coming in is just, the ground's going to be solid, solid. So uh, I guess a better way to put it, it's going to be cold enough to completely make everything frozen. Like everything you guys look around, it's not going to be a soupy mess. It's going to be rock hard. Okay. Kind of like that lady's brain we saw earlier. Thick skull. You know what I mean, Jellybean? There hasn't been any change of ground exchange from the western side of Sivitov, like at all, all through here. This area has not changed one bit since the last time we talked which somewhat makes me believe the Ukrainians could possibly wanting to actually force the Russians' hand here just a tad bit by continually pushing north, north and northeast. Okay, The Ukrainians could get just a big... They can actually increase their chances of taking Sivito by not hitting it directly on, but maybe cutting all the way across and cutting off these routes and then moving down. That could be a thing. Okay, Real thought here. Slow them down. Hit them hard. It's, the winter months are coming, so this entire area is going to be... Or winter months are here, so this entire area is going to be slow and slow. It's just going to be slow, okay? It's going to be honest with you guys. It's going to be impossible to move across certain fields without getting the vehicle stuck, which means if one vehicle gets stuck, then everybody's pretty much stuck at that point. The entire unit is stuck. So that's why we're going to be seeing slow and steady. Now, the Russians have also been able to take some ground south of here, right here. Ploshchanka, Ploshchanka. So this is also the area where I told you guys that the Russians were currently trying to attempt to push out of. They have attempted to push towards Noveski as well and Mekvika just outside of here, just west of here, and it has been, well, the attacks have been repelled. Okay, there's also heavy fighting taking place south of here as well. Really heavy fighting, Dobrova. So just outside of Dobrova, there is significant fighting where the Russians have actually been hitting Ukrainian positions on the outskirts of this town and inside of the town with attack helicopters. And the Russians have actually been able to expand some of their ground heading west towards Zorichny and control a big chunk of that main route that connects into Kremina. So all this right, this area you guys see right here, that was all just now taken by the Russians since we last spoke, which is a pretty decent chunk, and they have control of that main route. So basically we have the Ukrainians maintaining and making a little bit of a ground up in the northern portion of this AO, and the Russians making up some of the ground they've lost in the southern portion of this AO. So... When it comes to Kremina, the southern side of Kremina is pretty much still a weak part for the Russians and right here in this little pocket. But now the Ukrainians are going to have to shift some men around because now the, the Russians have gained a pretty decent chunk. That is pretty big. That is a fairly big chunk for this area. It's the biggest movement we've actually seen from either side, I guess, from either side. Um, so in the last like month and a half. Now I'm going to shift south towards Bakhmut. So now we're around Bakhmut right now. I'm going to tell you guys, Bakhmut region is... is 
is it's tough to say that's the least. The Ukrainian line is holding fairly well. Before we get into the mapping piece, I want to share a video with you guys from yesterday on the ground inside of Bakhmut. Друзі, наразі так виглядає один з райончиків міста Бахмуту. Місцеві знають, що це за район. Друзі, по оперативній ситуації на ранок 2 січня всі атаки, які тривали в нашому операційному районі, відбиті. Хоча вони досить масові були. У нас на нашій ділянці оборони вперли вчора, так як таргани. Декілька разів прийшлося підвозити БК. В один із приїздів приїжджав в районі літака коротенький рулик. Хлопці повісили червоно-чорний прапор і жовто-блокітний. То в коментарях там люди зайшов ввечері почитати, коли добрався до інтернету. Таке. Уважно дивіться, хлопці, це Бахмут, це Україна. Якщо коротко, по бахмутській конгломерації лінія оборони стоїть, лінія оборони тримається. Не хвилюйтесь, зберігайте спокій. Всі на своїх місцях роблять свою роботу. Чергова дата взяття фортеці от всяких різних там аферістів із сусідньої держави терориста. Це вже сьома чи восьма за цей час, що ми тут вже вони назначають. Не було і не буде. Бахмут – це Україна. Стояв, стоїть і буде стояти. Вірте за село. So we have chunks south of Solodar and north of Solodar. This is the one north of Solodar. We know that it was, that's been there for about a week or so now, but that new chunk south of Solodar is kind of um, causing a little bit of issues, I guess you'd say, for the, the, the Ukrainians on the northern side of Bakhmut. They just got hit in Krasnohora and Rose Dalika, Rose Dalika right there. So the Russians have actually pushed north out of both these areas and are attempting to take those two, um, two towns. I told you guys as well in the last episode, these key intersections all along these main routes are going to be very, very important to hold for the Ukrainian side of things. They have to hold those routes. Very important. And that's why the Russians are now pushing pretty, pretty heavily through here. I still think it's going to be slow going because of the terrain they're going to be dealt with. That getting to where they are now was very difficult, extremely difficult, but getting to where they're wanting to go, it's going to cost them a bit of their men's lives, to be honest with you guys. Now, the Russians have been able to break also south of the city, Optine, which is going to be right here. You guys see this big chunk right there? And they've also actually added this as well. So the Russians have made a little bit of advancements, but the one on the southern side of the city is, is fairly important because this is the area that was extremely fortified. And I'm going, to, I'm going to call it on the outskirts of Bakhmut. It's not Bakhmut proper just yet, but it is one of those little, I guess, suburbs, as we put it here. The fighting is extremely heavy here, like extremely heavy on the southern side. And from that video, as you guys did see, they are hitting the Russians. <laughs> you can hear it in the background, but it's very basically these artillery duels coming out of these northern side of Bakhmut going down on top of the Russians as they're trying to push through. So this whole area is just absolutely brutal. And very, very intense. There's been really no change along this side. The Russians are attempting to push north out of here as well. All through here. And they're trying to gain access to this main route again. This one right there. So, which is another key. Remember these two routes? These are the main routes that they need to hold. The Ukrainians need to hold these main routes through here. But other than that, when you guys are talking about Bakhmut, that's pretty much what has been, oh, what's been going on. This is going to be one of the, the most important, I guess you'd say, pieces of the Ukrainian war that is going on. And I think if they can hold it, I think they're going to inflict so much damage to the Russians. It's going to be very difficult for them to come back. And a lot of people probably don't believe me, but I do believe this. If Bakhmut can hold and they, the Ukrainians can inflict as much damage as they possibly can on them, it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult for the Russians to come back. There's been no change inside of Kyrgyzstan, no change south of here. Just south of here is actually where that high Mars strike was, which is kind of crazy if you guys think about it because they hit them all the way over there, which means if you